Today, what I want to talk about are your values. What are your values with regards to these four specific categories? While we're processing this, I want you to really dig deep and think about what your parents valued, what society that you live in values, and then what do you value? So these are the four categories. So let's start with work. What would you say the society that you live in, the culture you live in, where you live, the people you're around, what are their values around work? What were your parents' values around work? And then what are your values around work? What, if you were to say, I'm doing this because, and it's worth it because, what would you need to be associated with work in order for you to say it's worth it because? Sometimes it's I believe in working because I know it will help me support my children. Others believe in the cause that they're behind, that they work for a nonprofit, for example, and they believe in the work they do even though it's hard. Some people believe th that their value around work is actually having freedom and autonomy, and so they don't really care too much about their efforts and their work. They just do their job, come home, because the whole point is that they are going to work only to supplement the other things that they value. So what is that for you guys? Next session is health, your mind and your body. What are your values around health? What are society's values? What does society tell you you should value? What did your parents tell you you should value? And what have you decided really matters to you? So health, for example, society tells me as a healthy woman, I need to be under 135 pounds, probably under that, and it tells me that I need to have perfect skin and long hair and I need to be obviously symmetrical and have all my limbs. There's a lot of pressure around looking healthy but not necessarily being healthy. Say my mother put a lot of emphasis on health being a nurse and it was really all about taking care of our heart, staying fit, eating vegetables, and a, a lot of focus on what we put in our body. The other thing that she really focused on because we were athletes was performance. So I'd say if there was anything, there was a lot more emphasis put on performance than our appearance. And obviously there were some aspects about my looks that I can't not notice about society and some of those pressures that still happen. But for the most part, there was a lot of emph emphasis on really taking care of my body and more confidence and I look fine. So I think that was very valuable. I think what I've taken away and I value more myself, which I didn't get as much of, is fitness and having more emphasis on mental health and self-care as opposed to just fitness for the sake of performance, like a sport, which is the pressure that I got from my family. So look, I'm now at that state where I am looking for more balance and something that I can sustain, like dance and yoga, things that I can sustain until, you know, in th through my 80s and 90s and um, create more of that daily lifestyle of taking care of my body and honoring my body. Same with my mind. Not a lot of emphasis in the South for therapy. And so after graduate school, realizing how amazing therapy was with regards to my own well-being, I now integrate that into my life on a weekly basis. Same with meditation, things like that. So those are the things that I've come to value, even though society around me and some of the people in my life don't necessarily value those and still might pressure me in other arenas. Next category. What has the world told you about hobbies and self-care? Like fun. The world, I would say fun needs to be epic and adventurous and YouTube worthy. I think there's a lot of pressure for it to be Instagrammable, right? And we forget to do it for the sheer pleasure. So I feel like I've got a lot of pressure from the world around that, that I need to document and it needs to be pretty. Me having fun as opposed to finding the small things in life. My family, on the other hand, there was zero, I'm not gonna say zero, I'd say there was 0.2% emphasis on fun in my family. Let me just tell you, we did not celebrate birthdays really, or they were surrounded by stress. Celebrating anything really was almost like just a hot kettle starting to 
starting to boil. It was just waiting for something to blow up. So fun and hobbies, no, my family very much valued work. Only work, no hobbies and fun. Now I met my husband and his family values fun <laughs> and occasionally they'll work. The emphasis was very different. And so being with him for the past 11 years has really taught me how much fun improves our quality of life and how much we need it. And nobody else needs to know we're having fun. We don't need to Instagram about it. And sometimes it's little things like cracking a little nerdy joke over text and those can be special moments. And so I've learned a lot about that and I am really working on it. I'm not great at it yet, I'll be honest. Um, so yeah, what have been yours? What does society tell you? What did your parents tell you about fun and hobbies? And what have you come to decide is your value around fun? Have you had a chance to think about it? It's okay if you haven't, and this is the first time. That's okay, too. You don't have to have all the answers today. You can just kind of sit on it. Like, what is fun for me? I wouldn't have even listed it as one of my values 10 years ago. Was, there was so much shame around just letting loose and enjoying myself. I really felt like I'd need to deserve it um, and almost justify it. Last one. Our values around our relationships. What has society told you? your values around your family and friends ought to be. What did your family tell you? And what have you decided for yourself are values that in your wisdom and life experience, you've decided makes the most sense for you and that, that um, you value the most in this area. My mother came from a family where family only matters and they don't care very much about friends. And this was very hard for me because growing up, we didn't live near family. We didn't live really near anyone. And so this was such a struggle because anytime I wanted to do anything that didn't involve family, it was translated as disloyalty. Essentially that we were abandoning and neglecting the needs and that time and that limited time we have with family. So that was really tricky. Like I have some friends where their their parents had friends over on a regular basis and they have neighbors and friends and their neighbors and friends kids that they grew up with that they're almost closer with than family members and so their their families really valued community connection for example. So what are your values? There are certain family members that add very little value to my life. Um, at this point in my life and it's more work to try to sustain those relationships. Not that work is bad, work is good and some relationships take work. But I've also equally, when my time is limited, had friends who have served as almost family members and have been there for me through some of the thick and thin parts of life. I value the integrity of the relationships regardless of our blood relation, I guess. And then what are those values within family friends? Like trust, honesty, do we value having space and autonomy and having more time alone? Do we value connectedness and being together on a frequent basis? What are things that are important to you and you value within your relationships that hold them as like glue together? For example, in relationships, like in my partnership, there are lots of stigmas around like if you fight, it's a sign you're not doing well. Not necessarily. I call it relationship maintenance. <laughs> Our daily bout of relationship maintenance. When you are feeling a sense of unrest in one of these categories, that is a sign that you are being pushed to act in a way that is not within your value system. I want you to ask yourself when you are feeling stressed about work, for example, if you're having a lot of anxiety around work, what are you being asked to say, think, and do that is outside your value system. Because that's gonna help you get down to what is really bothering you, the root of the issue there. And then what that does is that gives you the power to do one of two things. Address that value. Is this a value that really is based in what I believe in and how I wanna identify myself? Or is it based in fear? So it allows you to kinda of take a, a, a better look at that. It is very hard to hold your own values and your own boundaries while also, which is possible, at the same time respecting others' differences. And especially those that we're a little meshed with. Our family, we can't help it. It takes so much time and wisdom and understanding and, and contemplation 
and growth to really become in, in line with our values in a way that we, it gives us strength and patience and tolerance as opposed to feeling reactive when it's being challenged. And usually this is r really ironic, but when the more reactive we are, it's actually a sign that we are more unsure about our values because the more sure we truly feel and at peace we truly feel with our values, the less we feel the need to convince others of it. And so the more you find yourself trying to prove yourself or explain yourself, that's usually a sign that you're actually at the most disease. I hope you have a relaxing evening, a relaxing and hardworking or whatever your week needs to be for the rest of the week. It was great talking to you with uh, about this and thank you all for the engagement. And I will see you all next week. Bye. Mwah.